Reese Walker Taylor. So now God, as we watch in great anticipation of the public manifestation of your call into ministry upon the life of Sister Maurice Walker Taylor, we invocate the Holy Spirit to fall fresh and give us a new anointing, God. Saturate our hearts, penetrate our hearts to receive what has ordained for such a time as this. Amen. Amen. Put those hands together and let's give us some love. Let's break her with you. God bless you so much. Uh, we do have a program and I will just briefly go over a few things with you and then we'll proceed on. Uh, we're going to have a musical offering, uh, which is going to be by our First Lady, uh, First Lady Deborah Shannon, followed by the scripture reading by our own, the Reverend Dr. Rosa Wynn of Restoration Worship Center in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, followed by the prayer by Reverend Patricia Grant of Zion Baptist Church. The purpose statement will be given by our beloved pastor, uh, Michael Shannon, and again, the uh, Music offering will be rendered by First Lady Deborah Shannon, and then the moment of the time that God has ordained. Jeremiah puts it very simple. He says, for I know what I have already planned for your life. And so this is a moment that we can share in her life that she may never get to be with us in this audience again under these circumstances. So let's celebrate this moment that God has ordained in the life of our sister that we love so much. And we thank God for all that he has done, he is doing, and what he's going to do in her life. God bless you. Let's celebrate this moment. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, Lord, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, Lord, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, Lord, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, Lord, and I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, Lord, and I'm gonna let it shine, hallelujah, Jesus gave it to me, Lord, and I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, all in my home, Lord, I'm gonna let it shine, yes, all in my home, Lord, I'm gonna let it shine, hallelujah, in my home, Lord. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, shine, 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 shine. Oh, everywhere I go, Lord. I'm gonna let it shine, 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 shine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Amen.
Let the church say amen. amen. Praise be unto our God. Our scripture for this auspicious occasion, this blessed occasion, comes from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. You can follow along with whatever version you might have. Again, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of the ministry. Thus ends our scripture lesson for this occasion. God bless. As Reverend, as Reverend said, for a time such as this, yeah. let us pray. I will bless thee, O Lord, at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Most holy and righteous Father, we praise and glorify your name on this very special day in the life of Sister Maurice Taylor, the day of her initial sermon. Thank you, Lord, for being our sustainer, provider, redeemer, deliverer, and protector. Yes. We thank you for being a faithful God, the one who loves us unconditionally. And we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We can't forget to recognize you, Lord, as our creator, knowing that without you, we can do nothing. But we are able to accomplish much. Amen with you on our side. Yes, yes. Gracious Father, we come this day in time to witness one of your very own. Yes. yes. Called into the ministry. Mm. She's been in the background, Lord, yes. doing your will. Yes. And now you have anointed her and pushed her into the arena to be yes. bold yes. and to go among the hedges and the highways and the byways yes. to declare the gospel yes. of Jesus Christ. God, thank you for that. Thank you, God. She's going to bring your people in. Yes. Because of who she is. Yes. There, and who you created in her. Yes. Lord, our prayer today is that you will continue to surround her Please. with your wisdom from on high. Give her strength to do your will. Yes. In all seasons. Let her not become weary in doing good. Yes. For in due season, she will uh, prosper. Yes. Bless the message. Yes. Bless the messenger in a mighty yes. way. Please, God. Allow the Holy Spirit to rise up in each of us. Please, God. So our spiritual eyes and ears yes. will see and yes. hear the word you have planted in yes. her spirit. Don't forget to bless her husband, yes. her family, yes. her friends. All of us who stand in support, yes. and we're cheerleaders for her, for her dedication, for her commitment in the service of the Lord. Yes. Give her hope where there is no hope, yes. peace where there is no peace, Lord, and love where there is no love. 
In other words, Lord, keep giving her Jesus. Yes. Keep giving her Jesus. Keep giving her Jesus. Bless the angel of this house, Pastor Michael Shannon. Bless him for his devotion to you yes. and the building of your kingdom. Yes. We lift our hearts and praise for his obedience to your words and to the mission of the Zion Baptist yes. Church. God, we adore you. We love you and we magnify your holy name. For it's in the name of Jesus, the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God bless you. Certainly we're indeed glad to have this opportunity uh, to come into the presence of the Most High God. Uh, certainly to our worship leader, Reverend Betty Hill. Certainly to our uh, uh, Lady of the Hour, Sister Maurice Walker-Taylor, family members and friends from far and near. We are grateful that we're able to come before you with a statement of purpose. Certainly I'm grateful in my seventh year here at Design Baptist Church. Uh, we've had opportunity several months ago we have opportunity for Design Baptist Church to uh, exercise our privilege and our right, amen, uh, to witness this young lady and all that she has been doing through the years. And as she expressed her call to ministry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and certainly this body has agreed in our official meeting, amen, to give her an opportunity to come before this body, amen, to do her initial sermon, amen. And, and certainly, um, I'm one who believes in, in being fully clothed. I'm not trying to scare her, um, but by this time next year, I expect her to be ordained. Amen. Amen. There is much work to be done. The harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. We pray to the Lord of the harvest that the Lord will send laborers into the harvest. And we know that these things are possible and they shall be accomplished because we are a praying church. We are a God-fearing church. We're believing in God and believing in what God has in store for her in her life. And certainly I watch her husband, Brother Melvin Taylor and, and Sister Taylor, on many occasions, amen, he'd be sitting up in the crow's nest, as I call it, and she'd be hooping and hollering back in the choir. And then, then I look out and I see people, lives that they've touched, those that they've invited to church, those that they've encouraged to get married, amen. Those who they've encouraged them to get baptized, that they would see Jesus today and on the other side. So it is a, a, a pleasure and a privilege for me as her pastor, amen, to give her the opportunity. Pray for her, pray with her, as God and only God can do marvelous and miraculous things to her. But our prayers that they will sustain and keep her in perfect peace. May God bless you. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, he would not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord that keepeth me, he will not slumber nor sleep. For the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shepherd. Upon thy right hand, no, the sun 
shall not smite thee by day, nor moon by night. He shall preserve thy soul, even forevermore. My help, my help, my help. All of my help comes from the Lord. Lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from yes. the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, He would not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord that keepeth me, he will not slumber or sleep. Oh, the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shed upon the right hand, upon the right hand. No, the sun shall not smite thee by day, no moon by night. He shall preserve thy soul, even forevermore. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I have the honor today to introduce my mom, Mrs. Maurice Cordelia Walker Taylor. Maurice Cordelia Walker Taylor is a native of Dinwiddie County, Virginia. She is the first born to Fred Daniel Walker, deceased, and Vivian Antoinette Spicely Walker. At an early age, she joined the Mount Poole Baptist Church in Ford, Virginia under the pastorate of the late Reverend Dr. J.L. Woods. Maurice attended Sunday school and sang in the junior and senior adult choirs. Maurice attended Southside High School and later transferred to Dinwiddie County High School during the time of integration. Maurice applied for, but was not accepted to, Smith Deal Massey Business School in the late 1960s, because unfortunately the school was not accepting black students. She was then accepted and attended Smith Madden Business School in Richmond, Virginia. After completing her studies at Smith Madden, Maurice worked for a short time at Virginia State College, now Virginia State University, before moving with her husband Melvin to live in Italy for two and a half years. Upon returning from Italy, Maurice gained employment at Hercules Incorporated, now Aqualon, in Hopewell, Virginia, 
and retired after 30 years of faithful service. In 1986, she became a member of Zion Baptist Church and she has been employed as the administrative assistant, although she wears many other hats for the last <laughs> time. <laughs> Maurice is a member of the following ministries and organizations, official board, finance ministry, pulpit aid ministry, vacation Bible school, technology team, Bible study, Sunday school, and the combined choir. She has been married to Melvin Taylor for the last 53 years. And they are the proud parents of two daughters, Monica Taylor Lewis and son-in-law, son-in-love Mark me, Kanisha Taylor, and one granddaughter, Adriana Willis, and one grandson in love, Marky Lewis. She is also blessed to have many surrogate children and grandchildren. Maurice enjoys traveling, singing, and spending time with her family and friends and helping others when they are in need. She, is, she also enjoys an occasional fishing trip with her husband. <laughs> Maurice lives by the motto, Every day the Lord allows me to wake up is a great day, and no one can make me have a bad day but me. Her favorite scripture is Psalm 91, which reads as follows. God, our protector, whoever goes to the Lord for safety, whoever remains under the protection of the Almighty can say to him, you are my defender and protector. You are my God, and you I trust. He will keep you safe from all hidden dangers and from all deadly diseases. He will cover you with his wings. You will be safe in his care. His faithfulness will protect and defend you. You need not fear any dangers at night or sudden attacks during the day or the plagues that strike in the dark or the evils that kill in daylight. A thousand may fall dead beside you, 10,000 all around you but you will not be harmed. You will look and see how the wicked are punished. You have made the Lord your defender, the most high, your protector. And so no disaster will strike you. No violence will come near your home. God will put his angels in charge of you to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands to keep you from hurting your feet on the stones. You will trample down lions and snakes, fierce lions and poisonous snakes. God says, I will save those who love me and will protect those who acknowledge me as Lord. When they call to me, I will answer them. When they are in trouble, I will be with them. I will rescue them and honor them. I will reward them with long life. I will save them. Mom, I just want to say from your children and granddaughter, we are so elated to be here with you today as you have been there for us so many times. And we are so excited for you. Thank you. Following the next selection, selection by First Lady Shannon, the next voice you hear will be our mom and grandma and wife, <laughs> Sister Maurice Cordelia Walker-Taylor. Thank you. I thank the Lord for every remembrance of you. I pray that you long for his purpose in all you do. That you may know how deep, how high, that you may know how far, how wide is the Father's love for you, and that he will always be with you. This is my prayer for you, that you may know him. This is my prayer for you, that you may grow in him, love him, trust him, place no one above him. 
This is my prayer. This is my prayer for you. I pray you'll be grounded and unmovable in your faith. May you be surrounded by his presence night and day. Now unto him whose power can do more than you think or ask him to. To him be the glory without end forever in Jesus' name. Amen. This is my prayer for you that you may know him. This is my prayer for you that you may grow in him love him trust him place no one above him but this is my prayer this is my prayer for you this is my prayer for you that you may know him this is my prayer for you, that you may grow in him, love him, trust him, place no one above him. But this is my prayer, this is my prayer for you. This is my prayer. This is my prayer for you, my sister. This is my prayer. This is my prayer for you. Praise the Lord. Long ago, I didn't know nothing about Jesus and his love. I had heard about him. But I had never felt this matter which comes from above. In this life of sin, I could no longer stand. I asked my mother, how do you get to know the man? She said, you must be, don't you see, you've got to be again long ago i didn't know nothing about jesus and his love i had heard about him but i had never felt this manner which comes down from above in this life of sin I could no longer stand. I asked my mother, how do you get to know the man? She said, you must be. Don't you see? You've got to be born again. Well, you must have that fire and holy ghost that burning and churning keeps the prayer we're turning the kind of religion you cannot conceal it makes you move makes you sh shout makes you cry when it's real right. i've got my hand right, right. in the wine and chain, my soul's been stirred. 
In my Jesus' name, I'm filled with it. I'm free from sin. You know I've been again. First, giving all praises and honor to our God, mm -hmm. our pastor, other ministers and officers on the pulpit, in the pews, family, friends, and members of our congregation. Good afternoon. I am blessed and thankful for your presence, your prayers, and support. I would like to acknowledge my husband, along with other family members and friends present on Zoom and Facebook. I want to personally thank each of you, and I am especially thankful for my husband because he has prayed and supported me from the beginning of my calling and throughout my time of preparation. Not only that, but I truly believe he will continue to pray and support me on this ministerial journey. I want to also thank Pastor Shannon for all of his prayers and support for helping me reach this milestone, Amen. the preaching of my initial sermon. Amen. I am blessed and honored for this privilege. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for using me in your ministry. Thank you for guiding me thus far and granting me your grace. Even now, Lord, you know the purpose for which I have come to you, O oh Lord. Today, Lord, fill me with the grace, anointing, and power so that I can preach your word. Yes, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit take full control of me Please, and let me speak. And let him speak, not me. You know the needs of the people who are listening to this preaching. I submit to you so that you can use me in whichever way yes. you want to. Yes. I choose to glorify only you, Lord. Thank you for girding me with your special grace, mm -hmm. power, and strength, Lord. I take victory in your mighty name. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. <laughs> My friends... The scriptural basis for my initial sermon is recorded in the Good News Translation of the Bible by the disciple John and the Apostle Paul. According to chapter 3 and verse 16, John recorded these words. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only son that everyone who believes in him may not die but have eternal life. According to Romans chapter 12, verses 5 through 8, Paul recorded these words in the same way, though we are many, we are one body in union with Christ. And we are all joined to each other as different parts of one body. So we are to use our different gifts in accordance with the grace that God has given us. If our gift is to speak God's message, we should do it according to the faith that we have. If it is to serve, we should serve. If it is to teach, we should teach. Whomever shares with others should do it generously. Whomever has authority should work hard. Whomever shows kindness to others should do it cheerfully. Thus ends our scriptural basis for my initial sermon. For a subject I have, I would like to use the world's greatest gift. I would dare say that most of us present today have given a gift or have received a gift. As many of us know, gifts are given for special occasions such as Valentine's Day we just had, Birthdays, Christmas, weddings, baptism, anniversaries, graduation, and the list could go on and on. 
But the point I make is we are gift givers and receivers. Now, not only are we gift givers, but from the reading of our scripture, we can easily discern that there is another gift giver who is the only true and living God. Not only has he given us what is known as spiritual gifts, as noted by the Apostle Paul, but John has declared that our God has given us the world's greatest gift, none other than his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ. Thus, our Savior is not only the world's greatest gift giver, he has given us the world's greatest gift. Now, Mr. Webster defines gift as anything given, given willingly by someone without a payment or present. This reminds me of God, the gift giver, and Jesus the Christ, the world's greatest gift. Now, before I expand upon the world's greatest gift, let me inform some and remind others that God, according to other writers, has given us approximately 26 spiritual gifts. We did not tell God what gifts we want. He didn't ask us what gift we wanted. He has given these spiritual gifts to glorify him by serving his people. We all have at least one spiritual gift and some of us have more than one. No matter the number of gifts, let us use what we have been given to serve God's people. Exactly what does it mean to serve? Just help others. Matthew 25th chapter, verses 35 through 36 states, I was hungry and you fed me, thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you received me in your homes naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took me, took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Mm. If someone is without a roof over their head, provide them with a place to live. With all this going on in our world today, the politics, all you hear on the news of politics, COVID-19, wear a mask, don't wear a mask, finances low, or no finances at all. Mm -hmm. Food prices and gas prices are going through the roof, along with other things needed just to survive a normal life. Yes. Some people have reached their wits end yes. and they just need someone, yes. perhaps just to listen, yes. to talk to, yes. to pray for them. Yes. So as Christians, let us listen or give some positive advice. Let us serve without judging. Mm -hmm. Let us serve without expecting nothing in return. Yes. Let us serve mm -hmm. without any strings attached. All right. Let us also serve in our local churches. Yes. Serve on the usher board, sing in the choir, drive the church board, yes. teach Sunday school, volunteer for the tutorial program. Visit the sick and the shut-in. Mm -hmm. Just serve. Let us serve outside of our local congregations by serving our neighbors. Be a good neighbor. Check on others. Bottom line, just serve wherever there is a need. Yes. I know how important it is to glorify God by serving his people. Well, serving is one of my gifts. Mm. I serve by helping, listening, giving to those in need, developing friendships and relationships with both the young and the old. Yes. Oh, it is a joy using our spiritual gifts to serve God's people mm -hmm. and glorifying him. Yes. You know, we even get joy by giving and receiving those tangible gifts. We go to great lengths in our tangible gift giving. Now don't mention Christmas. <laughs> Because some of us shop all year trying to get Christmas gift. But the world's greatest gift is Jesus the Christ. Yes. Christian friends, I truly believe God enjoyed giving us the world's greatest gift. 
But John left word that God so loved the world that he gave his greatest gift. He gave us his gift as an act of love. I can't fathom in my mind how much our God must have enjoyed giving us his all and his best. It reminds me of the lyrics of the hymn, you can't beat God giving, all right. no matter how you try. Yes. So the question this afternoon is, have you accepted God's gift? It's no ordinary gift. You can't buy it at Walmart. You can't get it online from Zoom. You don't have to worry about the size. You don't have to worry about the color. This gift is God's son, our savior, the savior of the world, our gift of life and our gift throughout in eternity. Oh, what a gift. Mm -hmm. If we accept him, he will become our doctor. If we accept him, he becomes our lawyer. Yes. If we accept him, he becomes our hope in a hopeless world. If we just accept him, he will become our joy in a confused world. If we accept him, he will become our way out of no way. Yes, he will. If we just accept him, he will become our peace in the time of war. Oh, what a gift. He will become our light in a dark world. Yes. If we just accept him. Yes. He will become our bread in a starving yes. land. If we just accept him, he will become our bridge over the troubled water. Right. If we just accept him, he will become our friend yes. in a lonely and friendless world. Yes. He will never leave us yes. nor forsake us. Oh, what a gift. If we accept God's gift in the words of the songwriter, Donald Lawrence, the gift, it will look good on you. Yes. The systems of the world will try to take your confidence. Oh, yeah. But these systems are designed to make you doubt what heaven sent. Mm -hmm. The systems of the world will take your confidence but these systems were designed to make you sit down on your gift. All right. But the gift God gave to you, give it back to him. Mm -hmm. When he sees it's operating, it's a compliment to him. Mm -hmm. But the gift God gave to you, give it back to him. Yes. For the gift, it will make room, position for great men to see you. Yes. The gift it looks good on you. All right. The All right. gift, it looks good on you. All right. The gift, it looks good on you. The gift, it looks good on you. And you wear it well. God has graced you and you wear it well. Thank you. Oh my. oh my, the gift looks good on everybody in here. <laughs> what, what a joy to hear how God has manifest through you this afternoon. Speechless. Many of us know your journey. You were a student of Dr. Wynn uh, as well as mine at uh, Virginia Union um, program. Evan Smith leadership program. And so you were so profound in being uh, there with us and you learned so much and it's paying off now. So we thank you for allowing us to teach you uh, during that time. Evidence of what God will do when you trust him with your life. Amen. 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 And so again, we are extremely proud of you uh, at this point. And uh, we're going to proceed now with the call uh, to discipleship uh, and uh, our great uh, sister Molly Walker Taylor will take care of that for us. And then from there, we're going to have uh, the presentation of the license 
What a moment. Oh my God. You only get it once in your life. And believe me, the adrenaline starts rushing. Amen. And, and sometimes it doesn't stop. Okay. So she's going to be hypo for a while. while. Work, work, work. Work, work. She's going to be up there now. I'm telling you, it's like a spiritual high. Like you listen, you think some other substance can get you up there? This moment right here. We'll take you over the top. Amen. Amen. So we're going to continue uh, again with remarks. Um, after the presentation of the license, uh, Digan Cleveland Rogers uh, is going to come with remarks from um, Zion Baptist Church. And then uh, from there, we're going to have uh, Reverend Dr. Archie German, pastor of Union uh, Branch Baptist Church. Following that will be uh, our own pastor, uh, Shannon, with remarks. And then the young lady, God's woman servant, will come back with you again and uh, close us out. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together and celebrate this moment. You can come with me. The invitation. God bless you, sister. I wish we could hug like we normally do. <laughs> it's okay. I love you. This evening or this afternoon, I will be extending the invitation. There may be someone doing this preaching message who has not accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. I believe in my heart that Jesus, the son of the living God, I have not made a public confession of your faith in the Lord today. And today is a good day. I just spoke on the gift would look good on you. So if you have not given your life to Christ, today is a good day. And the gift will look good on you. If you are on Zoom and Facebook or looking for a church home, you may call 804-733-7561 and someone will contact you. Please pray this prayer with me. I believe and I confess that Jesus is your son. Mm -hmm. He died on the cross for my sins. I ask him to come into my life yes. and save my soul. God, I received that today, and I thank you in advance. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Hill. God bless you. Sister Taylor. There's the last time I'll say that. And that's how I slip of the tongue. Yes, Amen. Dr. Wynn, I know that you also, as Reverend Jackson Hill has stated, were one of her professors, yes. Evan Smith. And so after Dr. German uh, shares his with Mark Wood, you'd be so kind also to come back again, amen, to share your remarks as well. Sister Taylor, would you please stand? Uh, I'm going to stand on this side. I'm not Hebrew, so I won't read it all the way around. <laughs> you know, we can get that nice picture. Certificate of license. This is to certify Minister Maurice Walker Taylor as one who has given evidence of a calling by God into ministry as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and was licensed to function in ministry as the opportunity may be presented, and to exercise the God-given gifts in ministry by Zion Baptist Church, 225 Burn Street, Petersburg, Virginia, 23803, on the 19th day of February, 2022. Signature, Michael E. Shannon, Senior Pastor, Signature, church clerk, <laughs> Minister Maurice Walker Taylor. May God bless you. Amen. Here we go. Amen. 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 Amen.
Thank you, Lindy. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. And about the sisters here for a moment. We also want to give Minister Taylor a few trinkets, what have you. So this is the Thompson Chain Reference Bible. It is the King James Version. Um, there's a wealth of information in here. Now, they said it was large print, and I don't know because I had to swim. <laughs> I'm not trying to say anything. It is a wealth of information in this book. And uh, I, I remember May 11, 1979, the Reverend Dr. Charles L. Evans, former pastor of Zion Baptist Church, Petersburg, Virginia, 1942 to 1946, presented me with my Thompson Chain Reverence Bible. Mm -hmm. And I present to you, a daughter of his, his church and others, the same. We also want to share with you Romans Road to Salvation and Beyond, a Baptist church manual, of which you will find the, the various articles of faith along with the scripture references to them as well. And the Broadman Minister's Manual. Okay. You see a lot of uh, good information in it by Franklin M. Ziegler. And certainly we have the times to go into the Bible. Because more than half of this book is reference material and cross-reference material. I am indeed grateful to have seen you and your husband coming to Bible study sessions. Um, and certainly um, now those questions that he would intentionally, intentionally <laughs> look up to see if he could get me. <laughs> Thank you for being his help me. Oh. And finding some of them answers. <laughs> God bless you. We're going to send these over here for you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. Deacon Rogers, are you there? Yes, Pastor. I would like to say good evening to each and every one of you. First, let us give honor and praise to our Lord Jesus the Christ. I want to thank Pastor Shannon for the opportunity to give remarks on behalf of Zion Baptist Church. We thank all members and guests who join us today to witness the initial summer of Minister, Sister, Minister Maurice Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Minister Maurice Walker Taylor. We are rejoicing today as we grow in ministry and mentor. So, see, that's a new word. It's not a new word, but we, we would call her uh, sister, uh, either Miss Taylor, but now she's ministry, minister, <laughs> Maurice Walker Taylor. We are rejoicing today as we grow in ministry and minister, Maurice Walker Taylor answered the call to help take Zion Baptist Church ministry to a higher level by helping to in the work of God's kingdom. Let us rejoice and thank you, minister, Maurice Walker Taylor, for all that you have done in the past. And we thank you for what God has ahead of you to do. Minister Maurice Walker Taylor for answer God's calling. 
I thank you very much and keep on being obedient to the word of God. Thank you. Amen. And have a blessed day. To the angel of this house, Dr. Michael Shannon, to Reverend Hill. God bless you. Uh, to officers of this great church hall, Zion, and to all, all the members, we greet you in the name of him who orders our footsteps and always meets us with mercy. We thank God for this opportunity. We bring you greetings from Union Branch Baptist Church, Prince George, where God has allowed me be the under shepherd. Uh, on this auspicious occasion, there's so many things that we could say, and we don't want to ramble on, and we don't want to repeat what others have said. So we we sought some aid from what has given us comfort over many years, and it's called what the Bible says to the minister. And we want to use that at this time to address uh, Minister Taylor, you have been given the greatest ministry in all the world that of ministering to people and reconciling them to the Lord and majesty of this entire universe, God himself. For this reason, you must understand and be fully committed to the great ministry he has given you. God's word tells you how to live and to walk in Christ day by day. Consistency, obedience, and faithfulness. This is what God is after, following him, doing exactly as he says, bears the most fulfilling and fruitful life and ministry imaginable for this reason. You must be diligent in living and walking exactly as God says. Again, God's word stresses that consistency, obedience, and faithfulness must be the hallmarks of your life. And in sharing two and a half years with you here at Zion, you know a little bit about me and uh, I want to share this personally. There are no shortcuts to this. Repeat that. There's no shortcuts. Because every shortcut that the minister takes, the congregation suffers for. So sometimes the moonlight will meet the sunlight, but you got to keep on going. Many times it would seem to take your, your life's blood, but you got to keep on going. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly, rightly, rightly to the body, the word of truth. God be the glory for great things he's yet to do in your life. First, giving all honor and praise to our God, to the angel of this house, to Reverend Hill, um, Reverend Taylor, <laughs> and to all of you, God bless you. Truly, it's a blessing to be a part of this marvelous and wonderful occasion. And uh, you've blessed our hearts. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. 
And uh, just want to say a word about her being in class with the Evan Smith program, which changed over to the life, lifelong learning program mm -hmm. from Virginia Union University. Um, it was a pleasure having her in class. She was very studious, studious, stayed with us until the pandemic came. And unfortunately, we had to end the classes. She was always here. She took it seriously. And I praise God for persons like her who want to learn yes. and be prepared to do the yes. ministry of God. Yes. I won't say any more because it's already been said and I don't want to repeat it, but God, to God be the glory, continue yes. to do his work, yes. stay faithful, committed, and dedicated. That's what I saw in class. That's how I saw you in class, and I know you'll continue. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Again, thank you so much. Amen. I am indeed grateful. All of you have come, share. I'm indeed grateful for those who work behind the scenes to make these moments possible. Certainly, we do want to recognize also Dr. Claudia Grant. Amen. We thank him for being here and being supportive as well. Doctor and his wife, we heard of Reverend Patricia Grant, amen, that she shared in our prayer. Dr. Herbert Anderson, the bishop, amen. Amen. His wife, amen. Dr. Anderson, I believe you heard me say by this time next year. Mm. Amen. She's okay. in your hands. Amen. Amen. And then, then, did you want to have a word to say, Doc? Come on. Amen. Right here. I, y'all heard me. We're going to put you on the, on the, on the film. Amen. God bless you, sir. Hey, Doctor. How you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> Truly, we honor the Lord today and uh, Pastor Shannon, our worship leader today, all other medicine friends assembled here. I'm just honored to be here and to greet you in the only name that matters, and that is the name of Jesus. Only at the name of Jesus will every knee bow and every tongue confess. I'm just so happy to be here today, and I thank God for the invitation to come and witness such a great message coming from somebody I knew when she was a little girl. <laughs> All up and down the road, amen, and trying to do you. And I'm so proud to And I want to commend you for doing such a great job with me. And I just wish God would continue to bless you. My wife is with me, and, uh, and you know she's having a few medical problems at this time, but. We've been hanging together for the last six to seven, six to nine years, and I ain't about to leave. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. So I'm grateful that God allowed us to have an opportunity to have a few folk. Amen. That has meant so much to uh, Minister Taylor. And uh, we are doing a little switcheroo. Um, here at Zion, we have the, what we call tribes. So each member of the diaconate has a, a certain amount of members that they are responsible to and accountable for. And so, Deacon Christian, I know that uh, Sister Taylor was your charge, but now Minister Taylor is going to be the charge of Deacon Robinson. Amen. Amen. So, I've spoken with her. Amen. And so, um, Brother Taylor, you know, I don't know if Brother Robinson doing the fishing, but I'm sure you might get in the weather line in the road some kind of way. Amen. And so that um, um, I would ask her to, to be uh, at your beck and call Amen. if you wouldn't have traveled alone. Amen. Amen. And so certainly we have many other members here at the church for be here for you as well. We do want to share with you, I thank you uh, for uh, recognizing that you did not have a bulletin and I know you didn't have one. Amen. But we do have one for you. 
Uh, many of you who have, I had the email address to, I emailed it to you in advance uh, so that you would have it. And so if I didn't have your email address, I'm sorry, and I didn't get the mornings, but, but we do have a copy of the uh, program for you uh, to take with you. Uh, we've also prepared a, a carry out meal for you uh, to take with you. Uh, we still Baptist. You know, that's one thing. <laughs> Pandemic don't stop none of us from eating. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so we, you know, the good old Southern hospitality, or whatever. I just call it good old eating. And so, but again, I just want to thank each of you uh, for being able to come and to share with us and to being able to, to recognize the new structure that we are striving to follow. Amen. To strive to keep each of us safer. Amen. And so we, we are grateful and we are thankful. Minister, oh, and after the benediction, uh, we're going to ask that um, uh, Deacon Christian, you can go ahead and immediately turn the system off after the benediction, and I'm going to come back to give us some more instruction. Thank you so much. Minister Dill. God bless you. Where? <laughs> still <laughs> I just want to thank all of you all. Hmm. This has been a journey. And God has been with me yes. on this journey. Yes. I want to thank my husband, Melvin, my daughters, Monica with a K, <laughs> Kanisha, and my granddaughter, Adriana. Now, I thought she was at Penn State. We've been doing FaceTime. We've been on the phone. But they drive down today, and she comes in but I knew she was coming. I just knew she was coming. Anyway, we have surrogate sisters on the line from Maryland and California, cousins from Northern Virginia, New Jersey. We just got a bunch of people online. I heard somebody said that we're going to shut Zoom down today, but I don't know how many people are online, but that's okay. But those persons who tuned in on Zoom and Facebook, I just want all of you all to know, I love you and thank you for being a part of this day with me. To my mentors, Pastor Michael E. Shannon Sr., First Lady Deborah Shannon, Reverend and Dr. Archie, Ms. Dr. German, Sister German, as well as my Evan Smith, instructors, Reverend Dr. Wynn and Reverend Betty. You have all encouraged me. You have prayed with me. And you all have all waited patiently while God was doing what he does. It was 28, in 2018 that I'm going to share a little about this Dr. German. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were at a BGC conference and Dr. German came and he said, we need to talk. We, we talk all the time, we, you know, we friends, we'll talk. I said, when you wanna talk? I found a place over there and went over there and we sat down and talked. Dr. German looked at me and said, you need to stop running. And I looked at him and I just boo hooed the crap. Mm. And he went on and said what else he had to say. And I still cried. <laughs> then we had lunch with Sis German. Mel and I both. She told us some of the same stuff. She said, I told Dr. German, said, when I first met you, I knew she said, that girl got a call on her life and she doesn't even know it. Thank you, Sister German. Bless you both. For all of what you all have done, Pastor, I went in and told Pastor, I don't know, a week or so, a month or so later. <laughs> it was about time. I just want you all to know I love you. Again, we thank you for your attendance today. May God continue to bless each of you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you.
May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May you go in peace. Amen and amen. 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 If you will be so kind, this evening again, please.